Terry Malisi, and welcome back to The Gathering. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have red, white, and blue here in towels, and I am dressed in red, white, and blue. And that's because tomorrow is the 4th of July. And because on the holiday, most people have family picnics, cookouts, barbecues, pool parties, family reunions to go to. I thought it would be fun to have a little gathering the day before. So today's gathering is a pre-fourth pontoon party on the lake. So my friend Patty and Steve, who you've seen um, plenty of our shows, have a pontoon and they live a few doors down. And so for all the years I've been doing the gathering, you know, not once did I think, well, let's do a show on the lake. So I talked to Patty and I asked her, hey, what do you think about doing a cocktail party on the pontoon day before uh, 4th of July? And she loved the idea, so that's what we're doing. And who's coming tonight, of course, or this afternoon, I should say, um, Steve and Patty, their son, Scott, their daughter, Melinda, and her boyfriend, Jared, and my daughter, Chelsea, who you've seen in plenty of my shows, and her boyfriend, Ben, and of course, myself. And what will we be having on the pontoon? We'll be having mini Brie Bites, summertime seafood shots, festive feta with Romanesco and tapenade, French onion soup stuffed mushrooms, pesto tomato chicken bites, red, white, and blue fruit kebabs, and to wash it all down with, we're going to be drinking patriotic layer drinks. So let's get to it. The ingredients for the festive feta with romesco and tapenade, we have four the Romesco, two cups of chopped tomatoes, one red bell pepper chopped, a half a cup of chicken broth, five cloves of garlic chopped, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and two tablespoons of walnuts. Now for the tapenade, we have two cups of pitted Kalamata olives, one tablespoon of olive oil, two tablespoons of sherry, a quarter cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. We call it Italian, it's flat leaf parsley. And a quarter cup of uh, black pepper again. So for the romesco, I'm going to bring these ingredients over to the fry pan and start sauteing these. And now I'm going to add the red bell pepper and my half a cup of chicken broth. And I'm going to give this a good stir. So we're going to cover this, cook this for 20 minutes. And now it's on to the tapenade. What we're gonna do is we're going to take the pitted Kalamata olives, flat leaf parsley, the sherry, the pepper, and the olive oil. And we're going to process this until it's finely chopped. So here is our Romanesco. The liquid pretty much evaporated. I'm going to drop the walnuts in here just to soften them up just a bit. And the pepper. Romesco. 
And so now we're going to put it all together. Oh, and what's this? Just the main ingredient, the festive feta cheese. So what we're going to do is we're going to take in a prepared baking dish, we are going to spoon half the Romesco, and then we're going to dollop the tapenade. I'll put this like this a little bit so you can see what's going on. And then we're going to take two-thirds of the cheese and spread that around. And then we're taking the rest of the Romesco and putting that on top of everything. And then we're going to sprinkle the remaining feta all over it. So here you have it, festive feta with romesco and tapenade. Now, I'm not going to bake this now. I'm going to bake it before we leave. Oh, maybe an hour and a half before we leave so it can cool down to transport to the pontoon. But when we do cook it, it will be at 425 for about 20 minutes. But keep a watch on it. You won't want it to burn. Be right back with the next dish. And now it's on to our summertime seafood shots. Now what I have here is a pound of deveined and shelled cooked shrimp, a pound of bay scallops, which I poached for a few minutes, and then I let it sit in a cold water bath to stop the cooking process. We have one orange pepper chopped, one yellow pepper chopped, one diced tomato. We have a half a cup of red onion chopped. We have a quarter cup of lime juice, freshly squeezed, two tablespoons of orange juice, one eighth teaspoon of cumin. We have one tablespoon of um, freshly grated orange peel. We have a quarter cup of chopped cilantro, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, and one tablespoon of olive oil. So the first step in this is to take your shrimp and your scallops and mix it with the lime juice and the orange juice. Now what you want to do is you want to stir this until everything is well coated and then you want to cover it and put it in the fridge for half an hour so you can let all these flavors meld together. So once we do that, um, I will come back and add all the other ingredients and that's all it is. It goes back in the fridge to marinate until we divvy it up on the pontoon. I'll be right back. So this is marinated in the fridge for half an hour. And now I'm going to add my other ingredients. The yellow and orange peppers, the seeded tomato, the chopped red onion, give it a little kick, one tablespoon of olive oil. We have the cilantro, which as you know, if you've been watching me, Cilantro is one of my favorite herbs of all time. And the orange zest. And the pepper. And the cumin. Now I'm just going to mix everything all together. And you can see what a beautiful presentation this is going to be. Now, how I'm going to do it is I will transport this in a covered plastic container. And because we're on a boat and we're going to be moving around the lake, uh, I'm doing everything in plastic. So no one has to worry about dropping anything and glass breaking. So... 
I got these little cocktail plastic cups and I thought it would just be a perfect presentation uh, with this in those little I guess they could be big shot glasses <laughs> bigger a little bigger than a shot glass but uh, you get the picture and I think this is going to be a big hit because who wouldn't want to dig into this? So I'm going to put this in the fridge, let it chill some more, and we'll be on to our next dish. We've got three more to go, and time's moving on. Pretty soon it'll be time to head on over down to the pontoon. Be right back. And now it's on to the French onion soup stuffed mushrooms. I know, and I said I'd explain it later. French, um, this being 4th of July, Independence Day, America. Well, I chose this dish because my daughter loves French onion soup. And, um, and we recently went to Paris for a week to celebrate a birthday of mine. And, um, and that'll be another show. That'll be a French show. But, uh, you know, I saw this recipe and thought, this is really interesting. Let me do this. So what we have here are two packages of white mushrooms, two white onions chopped, a quarter cup of beef broth, a splash of white wine, seven splashes of Worcestershire sauce, um, a couple of teaspoons of chopped parsley, two tablespoons of butter and a block of Gruyere cheese shredded. So what I like to do when I'm using mushrooms, I like to go ahead and hollow out the inside so you can stuff them a little better. And I know you've seen that before in one of my shows. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And when I'm done with this, we'll go ahead and move everything over to the stove except for the cheese so that we can uh, start the process so that's done and as you can see it's hollowed out it's much bigger so you're able to put more stuffing in and hey who doesn't like more stuffing Now, because we're pressed for time, I'm going to go ahead and get set up to do our mini Brie Bites. It's really quick and we need to be making some good time here. Okay, so I'll be right back getting that stuff together while I'm cooking the onions. Now, what I'm doing here is for this dish, you need to cut the rind off the Brie and putting it in the freezer for a few minutes enables you to do that much easier. And then what I'm gonna do, because we're going to fill these little mini phyllo shells with the brie and then top it off with an apricot preserve, um, I'm going to make 30 pieces. Of brie and then you just want to cut it in little cubes two three count as you go along a little left over for me just a bite <laughs> aren't they beautiful already made and this smells like I'm back in Paris having that French onion soup in that outdoor cafe. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take a shell, a brie, and 
Now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do this production style. The onions are almost getting there. Hey, Chelsea. Hello. Want to come by and say hi? Hello, everyone. <laughs> A face you recognize. Wow. <laughs> How's it going? All good. Just grabbing a brewski. Okie doke. She's of age now. She can do that. I've been of age. Oh, uh, yeah, but not during all of the shows. Cheers. <laughs> there you have it. We're going to fill a mushroom cap. with the onion mixture. So now, what we're going to do, drizzle this with the Greer. Sprinkle a little parsley. Not much. And here you have it. French onion soup stuffed mushrooms and mini brie bites ready for the oven. So I'm going to pop these both in the oven at 350 for about five to 10 minutes. Keep a watch because they will be done at different times. And here are the mini brie bites and the French onion soup stuffed mushrooms right out of the oven. Hello. Well, this is the second to the last dish and it's 10 past two. We're supposed to be at Patty and Steve's at three, so I gotta move it right along. So this is the pesto and tomato chicken bites. What we're gonna do is we're going to start making the pesto. So I have here two cups of fresh basil leaves and a third of a cup of fresh pine nuts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pulse this until I get it into a nice consistency. And that looks really nice. You can see that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add our Parmesan cheese and our garlic and pulse that some more. And while you're doing this, you want to scrape down the sides because it will start to collapse. And you can see that's mixing in quite nicely. And now we're going to add our olive oil and we're going to do it a little bit at a time so it'll help everything emulsify and help keep the olive oil from separating. So we're going to leave the blade running. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's moving right along. And that looks like perfect pesto to me. Now they say the proof is in the pudding. And if this was pudding, I'd be eating it all day. So now what we want to do is take the pesto, pour it on the chicken, make sure you get it nice and coated. We're going to get a little messy. I have a pre-sprayed pan and skewers that have been soaking because if you put them in the oven without soaking them, they could burn. And we wouldn't want that. So very simple. We're going to take a chicken piece, thread it, and you know, thread it so that it's, it's on there pretty good. And then thread a grape tomato. How cute is that?
So here you have them, pesto and tomato chicken bites. I am going to put these in an oven, 350 for 30 minutes, and they'll be ready right as we're heading out the door. Be back with the very last dish. Whew, well, we're almost there. And here is the very last dish, the red, white, and blue fruit kebabs. Now, I've got the pesto, tomato, chicken bites still in the oven, so we'll pull those out right before we're heading out the door. But let me tell you what's in front of me, if you can't already tell. Uh, red for the strawberries, blue for the blueberries, white for the coconuts. Can you hear that? So I've never opened up a coconut before. If I can't do this, I'm going to call Ben, Chelsea's boyfriend, to come out and help me. We need a hammer. So first what you want to do is get a Phillips head screwdriver and clean it very well. And then you want to find the soft eye. And I think it's this one. And you want to make sure you have a very sturdy, a very sturdy A very sturdy thing. Not so soft. Let's see if we get any milk out of it. Ah, yes we do. I bake them at a 200 degree oven for 15 minutes. Supposedly, that's supposed to help you remove the skin from the shell. Now because I'm not gonna attempt this with a knife. <laughs> I'm going to smash it with a hammer. I'm going to see. They say you're supposed to hammer it by the equator. And look at that. They were right. And here you have it. Woo hoo! <laughs> Coconut. Wow. So now, if I'm ever stranded on an island, I'll know how to open up one of these babies. You can see where I poke through it. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, if you ask me. Nature, cut the meat away from the shell. And there you have it. There's the coconut. Okay, so now I'm just going to put them together and we'll have a strawberry, a couple of blueberries, and a little piece of coconut. <laughs> red, white, and blue. Oh, red, blue, and white. I should mix it up. <laughs> Okay, I'll go ahead and finish these because they're wondering what time we were coming. So, you better get to it. Woo -hoo! Party time! Oh, and look, another pontoon. Hello! I got it. I got the shot. And look, another boat. Just another day on the lake. So, here we are on the pontoon with Steve and Scott and Jared and Bindi and Patty and Chelsea and Ben. And we're all enjoying these layered patriotic drinks. So, before we start, I'd like to tell everybody what we're having. We're having the... Uh, festive feta with ra romesco and tapenade. We're having summertime seafood shots. And, oh, sorry. Uh, Chelsea, <laughs> you can hold that. Small quarters. We have the mini brie bites.
French onion soup stuffed mushrooms, the tomato and pesto chicken bites, and of course the red, white, and blue fruit skewers. Yikes! Okay, so, and everybody just loves my narration. <laughs> and I haven't even had one of those patriotic drinks yet. That's because I have two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I believe, Ben, everybody move in a little. Yes. And my hair is on my face. What I'd like to do is thank everybody again for joining us at the gathering and see you next time. Cheers. 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 <laughs> so let's get rolling, Dad. Let's eat. And let's eat. Yeah, it looks so small from the front. It's crazy. Yeah, you're going to I'm pretty sure I am. I'm pretty sure I am. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I got to pay the rest of the store. These are mini brie bites. Oh my god. Filo cuts. Tang clams. <laughs> Where's the uh, trash bag, by the way? Right under your feet. No. Take two. You got something you can put on them? I left up the roof. Here's stage cam. Yeah. Woo!